Thank you for attending this webinar sponsored by NEC Corporation. To learn more about the Programmable Flow Networking Suite featured in these use cases, please contact your NEC account rep today or go to NEC Corporation of America's website at www.necam.com sdn. To find additional SDN, OpenFlow, and Network Function Virtualization resources, visit ipspace.net slash sdn. You know that OpenStack architecture is extremely modular. Everything is built through building blocks that rely on plugins which are either supplied in the OpenStack distribution or by individual vendors. And each building block has a well-defined API that it uses to communicate with the plugin. For the networking part, that component is called Neutron. It was quantum before, now it's Neutron. And numerous vendors provide plugins for the Neutron component of OpenStack. Unfortunately, we have a slight problem here. The current Neutron architecture, at least in the Grizzly release, Havana is way better. And in Grizzly, there was a hack where you could get multiple plugins to work. But most Grizzly deployments would use a single Neutron plugin, which means that you would usually use the vendor plugin, and then the vendor has to reinvent all the hardware and software wheels and control their switches as well as the hypervisor. So most of the vendors would use Open V switch in the hypervisor and they would use Open vSwitch sub-plugin within their plugin to control the soft switches in the hypervisors, and usually this would be done using VLANs, which is good enough to implement the core Neutron functionality, which is layer two segments and ports, but there are all sorts of extensions or additions to Neutron API that were added in the recent releases, like layer three networking, static routing, security groups, which are access control lists, and so on and so on. To implement that, usually you would have to rely on some sort of external device, be it a VM that implements a router or layer three switch in the physical network. What you can do with programmable flow, which implements most of those features is you can connect programmable flow to OpenStack deployment and programmable flow would control both physical and virtual switches. This is the tenant topology. So this is what you would see from the tenant perspective. You can have multiple bridges, which are layer two segments. You can have a router. You connect VMs to the individual ports on the bridges, which, as I said before, are layer two segments. So you see that programmable flow provides most of what you need in OpenStack. So you have layer two segments, you have optimal layer three forwarding, it has static routing, and it provides traffic filters because you can deploy traffic filters on egress or ingress ports that are. VM facing in this case. So quantum plugin that ties programmable flow with OpenStack currently Grizzly release will give you most of the functionality you need. And the beauty of this approach is if we go from the hypervisor with OVS to the physical switch, to the physical switch, to the physical switch, to the hypervisor, you don't need VLANs, at least not in the traditional sense between the hypervisor and the physical switch because programmable flow controller already controls the open v switch in the hypervisor and so you get the benefits of path based forwarding end to end to learn more about the award winning nec programmable flow networking suite or the complete sdn ecosystem nec is building with partners and how you can customize these use cases for your own networking needs call your nec account rep today or go to NEC Corporation of America's website at www.necam.com slash SDN. Thank you for your time and interest in NEC. Additional SDN, 
OpenFlow and Network Function Virtualization webinars, recordings and workshops as well as other resources like books and case studies are waiting for you at ipspace.net slash sdn.